Have you ever been in love? Or the better question is, have you ever been in love with a ghost? Are you a weaver or wants to be one? Welcome to Weaver of Tales podcast and go along with me as you breathe life to the stories you've made. Today, we will savor again the feeling of being in love and how it feels to lose it for the first time. Epitaph, an original composition. Are you writing again, Faith? A handsome boy appeared from behind a tree. I stood up and took one step backward. Don't be afraid. I'm just here to give you back this pen. He then showed it to me and with shaking fingers, I snatched it from him. How did you know that this is mine? Well, you are the only person I had seen writing here yesterday, he smiled. But how did you know my name? He laughed aloud. Your name is plastered there, remember? I looked at it and laughed at myself also. Do you want to talk? He offered. No, I think I'll pass. I need to go home now. It's almost 6 p.m. Maybe we'll have it tomorrow. I am sure to come back here, I assured him. Okay then, I'll wait for you. And I went down the hill, singing Jack and Jill. At dusk. I walked up the hillock again, and as promised, he's there waiting for me. I am wary of approaching him at first, for he's a stranger. He might have sensed this, as he gave me a questioning look, saying, Don't tell me you're thinking of the stranger danger talks you've had with your mom. Instantly, this disarmed me. I approached him, sat down beside him, and got to know him. It's surprising how effortless our conversations were and how fascinated I was with him. Because of this fascination, I can't help but notice minute details about him like the freckles on his nose, the unruly curl of his hair, and the flecks of gold in his eyes. This rendezvous continued for two months before I ever had a chance to ask him about the location of their home, which he just simply replied with, This is home. I found it odd, for I don't see any houses nearby. So I let it go and just appreciated the fact that he always makes time to see me. One afternoon, while we're lying down watching the sunset, A strange feeling crept inside of me as he held my hand. This scared me, for it was new and unfamiliar. Without knowing my inner battles, he brought our intertwined hands on his lips and kissed mine. I was speechless when he said, I love you, before closing the distance between our lips and kissed me. I went still and tried to replicate whatever his lips were doing. I can't believe that I've just had my first kiss with a boy. And a special boy at that. Very special to me. This moment sealed whatever doubts I had about my feelings and admitted to myself that I am in love. I am indeed in love with him. I was walking on cloud nine as I went home, savoring my ever first kiss. That night before I went to sleep, I touched my lips with my fingers and promised myself to be early tomorrow for our aim to spend more time with him.
Hey honey, what's up? Where are you going? And I might add, again. I gave her a toothed grin and replied, Hmm, I'll just go up the hill, mom. You know how I like watching the sunset. Yeah, I know the feeling. That hill up there used to be a favorite spot of mine. A look of nostalgia passed on my mom's face as she said this. Really? With peculiar curiosity, I walked closer to my mom and asked, Do you want to watch the sunset too? Well, I love the view up there. And that's our rendezvous place. Dad and you? I asked. I can't believe I am hearing this. Mom never shared anything about her life as a teenager. She shook her head. No, my first love and I. So that's not your first love? I asked in disbelief. No, and he knows that because he knew him. Now my mom started to get back on the chopping of ginger. I can feel that this is something that's still hurting her. The tension is palpable. Silence ensued for a while before she added. There used to be three of us. Her best friends. Inseparable. And we're always together. I fell in love with him for... My mom described her first love in detail. The more she speaks, the tighter the knot in my stomach gets. I greet mom's hand just before she finishes her last sentence and in an urgent tone i asked what is his name mom startled my mom asked my first love i nodded in reply knowing that my voice will betray me when i speak she sighed gabriel it's like a bomb has set off. I let go of mom's hand, for I can feel my own hands are shaking, and turn my back from her. Just then, tears started to pour down my face. I ran out of the house with my mom calling my name, but I didn't turn back. I ran as I never ran before, and in just minutes, I arrived at the hillock. I stopped on my tracks for I never expected to see him again. Gabe? I hesitated. The look on his face was full of sorrow, and I saw a glint of a tear on his cheek. I presume that you know me now. I tried to smile despite my tears. You are still the Gabe that I knew yesterday. I wiped away my tears and brightly said, you know what? Let's just sit down and talk this out. I took a step towards him, but he just shook his head. Just know that I love you, Faith. He said this and turned his back on me. I called his name but he started walking. I followed him and walked as fast as I could, but he seems like flying. I saw him went around a big tree before I lost sight of him. Tears raced down my cheeks, and I had difficulty breathing as gut-wrenching sobs tore through my chest. I called out his name again, but I only heard my voice echoing back. I am past caring now that I stumbled before I saw it. A tombstone with an epitaph that said, Loving son, brother, and friend. Gone too soon. He'll always remember you. Name Gabriel Samonte. Born April 13, 1976. Died May 1, 1992.
like to submit a story, send an email to weaverofTalespodcast at gmail.com. Until next time, weavers, good night. Thank you.